After Mamoru Hosoda's first three original films, he was being hailed as the new Hayao Miyazaki. But what does that really mean? Miyazaki is sometimes an auteur director, creating high concept films like Nausicaa of the Valley of Wind and The Wind Rises. Sometimes, however, he's a more populist family director, creating easily digestible films like Kiki's Delivery Service or Poco Rosso. The Boy and the Beast splits that divide right down the middle. On the one hand, it's an earnest coming-of-age story about a boy trying to overcome his inner rage and become an effective fighter and a better adult. It's a story straight out of Dragon Ball Z or Black Clover. On the other hand, the movie's set in a fantastical world of, well, furries, that's right. But they live in a feudal society straight out of Chinese fairy tales like Journey to the West. There are martial arts fights in the streets, colorful bazaars, and even a bald Buddhist monk who's also a pig. So it's also a big, bold fantasy film, and not in the typical high fantasy mold of, say, fairy tale. This feels like a lived-in place, where it's not just copying and pasting from D&D, Tolkien, and other medieval fantasy tropes. And even its shonen story feels high concept at times. Without getting into spoilers, the hero's inner turmoil takes on an actual physical manifestation at one point, requiring him, uh, requiring him to deal outwardly with issues usually handled inwardly. It's really interesting. Or My Hero Academia, or Naruto. And of course, this is all done with Hasoda's trademark animation style. Now, of course, Hasoda didn't actually draw all this, but he's imparted a particular style to his animators. A fluidity of motion, combined with a dynamism to how characters walk and talk, joined to a surprising subtlety of acting. The quiet moments don't distract you with unnecessary movement, while the action sequences feel frenetic and wild. I particularly love how that is used to contrast the human world with the beast one. The intensely urban humans move with economy of motion, everyone's looking at their phones all the time, and nobody wants to expend much effort. On the other hand, beasts move with dynamism and flair, appropriate both for animals and for their more vibrant world. Or Full Metal Alchemist, or Fairy Tale. And that's one of the reasons Hosoda is not the new Miyazaki. Miyazaki is a communist politically. His movies are all about people coming together to minimize their differences and work together despite those differences. Kiki is learning to be a productive member of society, to use her gifts for the, the benefit of the community, not necessarily her own. Hosoda's work, in contrast, celebrates differences and the unique struggles faced by its protagonists. Not many mothers struggle with raising werewolves, and not many teenagers deal directly with a massive computer virus. Hosoda's works are about personal journeys and overcoming personal problems or Blue Exorcist, or Noragami. A few final notes. I watched this with the English dub, and I was impressed. This is not an easy movie to dub. Characters can be over the top in some scenes and very subdued in others. Particular props to Eric Vale as the boy, who exemplified that adaptability in multiple, very different scenarios. I did find the monkey's voice actor to be a little too nasally and flippant for my taste, but that's probably just me. Overall, I was thoroughly entertained throughout watching the film, and while its combination of fantastical beasts and earnest characters isn't for everyone, I found it both endearing and engaging. And I hope you do too. Or Yu Yu Hakusho, or Inuyasha, or Beelzebub.